I have a Minolta MC Telerocker QF f3.5 200 millimeter lens that I'm going to be disassembling. This is one of the longer and larger rocker lenses that Minolta made. Uh, you can see it has the MC metal body design on it and a built-in lens hood as well. Um, so when it's fully extended, it's actually a pretty large lens. Um, and if I put it next to the 135 millimeter 3.5, you can kind of see that it's much larger and it's um, significantly longer and larger diameter. It's also very heavy compared to this other one, um, much denser feeling. I'm going to be fully disassembling this lens uh, to get access to pretty much everything, the aperture blades, the optics, mechanical pieces. This lens is harder to disassemble than a lot of the other ones I've taken apart. Um, it's uses uh, slotted or screws exclusively, which is kind of annoying um, because they're much easier to strip. And it also, um, just because it's longer lens and how it's designed, it's much more difficult to take apart than even the 135 millimeter um, rocker lens. So it's, it's a kind of a pain to take apart um, and even more annoying to put back together correctly. You can also see that there's one other difference is that the aperture control is up here on the top of the lens um, or like midway in, in the lens instead of down near the bottom. Um, so that's kind of something that influences a lot of the design aspects of this. For this kind, uh, particular lens, I really have to go in um, through the back to get access to most things. But before I do that, I'm going to take off the front of the, uh, the front glass piece and get access to the front of the diaphragm. Um, so first I'm going to remove the, the lens hood here. So it just is held in place by three screws going around here um, on this section, intersection in here. So now I can just lift off that entire lens hood piece. You can see it has the part that extends out and then the part that actually covers the main body of the lens. And here I have the aperture control ring and then this intersection which houses the glass and then the aperture and the diaphragm mechanism back here. So the next I'm just going to grab the front glass piece and remove this um, just so I can't damage it. Um, and it just screws into this main body section. It's this entire front section here. So I'm just going to unscrew that. And these other threads in here, they actually unscrew the name ring um, and remove the front glass piece. So if there's dust or fungus inside the actual optics itself, not just on these outer surfaces, you can try to um, unscrew these uh, inner rings here um, and clean inside the lens as well. I think they do use an adhesive, so you might have to use like a little bit of alcohol or something to, to dissolve that first. Now you can look and see that um, this is the diaphragm up here. Let me adjust this. So I have access to the diaphragm on the front of the lens. Um, and if, if there's just a little bit of damage or um, oil on the diaphragm blades, because of the difficulty of actually disassembling and getting to the back of the diaphragm, um, I would actually just recommend stopping here and trying to clean it as best as possible without damaging the glass or the diaphragm um, if, you, if you don't really need to. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to continue on with the disassembly and actually be able to remove most of the diaphragm and get it mostly on its own. Um, I wasn't able to quite take it as far apart as I would have liked, but um, I was able to get it separate from the back section of the lens at least. Now in the back section of the lens, one interesting thing is that because, if I can kind of angle this, you can see that the glass, even when I focus all the way to infinity so that it's as close to the back as possible, it's actually really far down in there, probably two or three inches. So it's really hard to actually clean the glass if there's stuff on there. Um, but for the same reason, there probably won't be fingerprints, but there might be dust and other stuff. Um, so I'm gonna be able to uh, get, uh, be able to clean the glass a little bit better and then also um, get access to most of these body sections and um, clean the diaphragm. To start with, I'm just gonna remove uh, a few kind of more cosmetic pieces that will just make things a little bit more clear. So there's this black uh, metal piece going around here that um, just covers up some mechanical components. It's held in place by three screws going around here. Okay, so that just exposed some of the stuff and you can uh, on the mechanical pieces on the back of the lens and you can actually, um, I'll talk about these more uh, later when you can actually see how it's coupling to the aperture. But this is only the back section where it has the stop down lever um, over on this side and then it's got a lot of pieces in here. But what's actually controlling the aperture is way up in the other section. Next, I'm going to remove this, um, this entire back 
plate assembly, so the mounting plate assembly. And that's held in place by these four screws going around there. Just lift this entire back piece off. So what I just separated is, let me just remove these screws, um, the mounting plate and this back tube that uh, kind of keeps debris out of the inside of the lens um, and some mechanical sections on the back that will help with hooking up the stop down lever to the aperture control from the main lens body over here. So I'm just gonna set aside the main lens body for a second and take off one more component on here, um, which is this silver ring going around on the exterior here. So it's just held in place by three little slotted screws. And I also want to uh, note that the uh, indentation here um, is opposite of this little lever on that side. So that'll be important for the reassembly. And I'm not going to take these out all the way. I'm just going to loosen these up and then try to slip this off because they're um, a pain to put back in. Okay. Now on going back to the main lens body, what is now exposed is the ring with the depth of field scale. So there's the depth of field scale over here and that's what's kind of sitting down on top. I'm gonna to take off these two little, uh, I guess washer type things there. I'm gonna remove those. And then there's a third one We're going around the edge right here that I'll also remove. And that one has a little uh, gap in it, so a little indentation. I'm just going to set those aside. And now here's where things start to get a little more interesting with the assembly of this lens. Um, you can see that what this piece, there's two pieces. There's an outer ring going around here and then this inner ring going around here. Um, and the inner ring has uh, two bars going right here. Um, and those are what actually guide the focusing of the lens when you um, go and you focus in and out. So here I can kind of show that. As you focus in and out, they guide the focusing up and down. So I'm gonna just remove this inner ring here by lifting up on it. And this is uh, the kind of one of the more annoying parts of this lens is this, the inner ring was sitting on a series of ball bearings going around here. So you can kind of see them. There are four ball bearings um, and then uh, little, or I guess five ball bearings and then little um, divider things in between them. So I'm gonna remove all of these and set them aside because they're just loose in here. Um, and this is really a pain to put back together later, but it's something you really have to do or else you'll probably lose uh, a lot of the ball bearings and other things. And on the ring I just removed as well, there is a little sil or a coppery brass looking thing, um, little piece of metal that I, I'm gonna set aside as well. Next on the ring that was just exposed going around here that um, as the depth of field scale, there are four screws uh, going around there. And I'm just gonna remove this entire ring. I'm gonna remove these four screws. Now I can just lift up this back ring and separate it um, from the main section of the lens. See the depth of field scale is over, when it was reattached, it's over by the lever, or, or so, yeah, over by the numbers on the aperture controlling and the lever. So that's how it lines up. And set that aside as well. Now what I've exposed on the back section of the lens here is the focusing mechanism in the inside of the lens. So this um, is the outside of the focusing mechanism that you move around and then the inside that focuses up and down. And these bars are what actually guides the intersection to go up and down instead of spinning around um, over here. So these things. So what I'm going to do is now with the entire lens, I'm going to grab just the focusing ring and unscrew this entire thing until I can remove it. And I'm gonna kind of note where I took it out, uh, just with some pencil marks, which will easily be removed later, um, so that I can line this up the correct way in a moment when I'm doing the reassembly. Uh, so the two pieces I have are the outer section of the focusing mechanism and then the focusing ring. 
Um, and in this section, you can actually remove the focusing ring separately from the intersection with the focusing mechanism and all the coils in here. Um, but generally, that's not necessary for this. Um, you'd only need to do that if you're actually wanting to clean all these little grooves and other things. Um, and then you'd have to go, uh, I'd recommend marking where it's currently set um, because I don't know a good way to focus this lens back to infinity um, and put it back together. So I'd recommend just marking once you take this off, aligning everything back up to where it was and then uh, uh, and then putting it back together, but I'm not going to do that. On the back other section of the lens, you can see the intersection of the focusing mechanism with all these in here, and these are very greasy, so you want to avoid handling them. Um, and then the other section that was exposed is this black ring going around here. So to continue on, I'm going to remove this black ring. Um, it's just kind of a, a body section. I'm not quite sure what it does or uh, how it's used, but I think it just covers up some of the gaps that are exposed when you focus in and out. So this black ring is held in place by three screws going around here, just three slotted screws. And I'm going to remove these or just loosen them up so I can remove this. Okay, so that just slides off and you can, there's a little gap that goes over the lever on the side here. Um, but I'm just going to set that body section aside as well. So the next step is that I want to remove the focusing section here from the lens body. Um, and I think the way you should be able to do that is that over here there's a little screw. Um, and I was thinking that you should be able to loosen this and detach this focusing section from the lens body. Um, but there is a little, if I can get that to show right there, there's a little washer on the inside or a, a, um, a nut on the inside that that screw is going into. So I wasn't able to figure out how to grab that without just stripping everything um, and damaging both the screw and the nut on the inside. So the other way you can actually remove this back section, which is a little more difficult, is um, there's four screws going down here, so far down inside the lens next to the main glass piece. And I'm going to just undo all four of those and lift off the entire back assembly Okay, so now I have all four screws out. Uh, I should just be able to work this around a little bit and lift it off the back section. There we go. So now I have the intersection of the focusing mechanism here. And also, if you look on the inside, you can see a little bit better now the way that this is actually getting coupled, the um, stop-down lever is getting coupled to the aperture. Let me see if I can get the lighting a little better there. Um, but in the inside of this, there's a little um, a gear system and then on the back section here there's also a little gear so that's what's actually coupling that and I'll talk a little bit more about that on the reassembly. On this other section the main lens body going back uh, you can see the two bars that are um, part of the focusing system here and here and then also the back glass piece and then the aperture control ring. So I'm going to remove these two bars uh, to just be able to lift off this back glass piece as well. Uh, and show a little bit more of how the aperture control is working. So these bars are held in place by two screws each. Um, and one is a little bit, this bar on this side is a little bit longer. This other one is shorter. Um, and this one also has a little secondary metal piece under it that I'll remove. So you can get that. And then there's this little other piece as well, kind of a, a stopper piece that I'll set aside. And this other bar does not have that, so I'll just remove this on its own. Okay, and now I have access to the back glass piece, and then you can see the rest of the aperture control. So what I'm going to do first is just remove the back glass piece. And there are two sets of grooves on this. There's the inner ones and the outer ones. And I only want to use the outer ones here and here uh, to undo just the back glass piece. Okay, so there's the back glass piece, which I'll just set aside as well. 
And now what I finally have access to is both sides of the diaphragm. So I can clean the aperture blades, clean that off. Um, and this is as far as I was able to take this lens apart, unfortunately. I'll describe a few more things of what's going on down here um, and how you might be able to take this apart further, but I didn't feel that it was worth doing on this lens. Um, and this is really, if you just need to clean the diaphragm, this is really what you need is access to both sides. So going back here to the front side of this diaphragm mechanism, you can see that there are four little or three little screws going around here. And these are actually holding in a metal plate going around here. And all that does, I'm, I'm not really entirely sure what that is supposed to do, um, but I think it's just holding um, on the aperture control um, or on the diaphragm plate that's holding on the blades. So if you want to remove the blades individually, what you would do is remove these three screws and then there are another set of little slotted screws going around here on the edge. Um, and once you undo all six of those screws in total, you should be able to just remove that front plate and remove the aperture blades and clean those on their own. Um, but because the blades in this lens are clean, um, I did not feel that it was worth doing that. On the back section here, um, there are two things. There's the mechanical sections over here, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment, but then there's this little screw over here, um, and that actually contains the ball bearing. So if I, uh, when you rotate this back and forth, it clicks. The, unlike a lot of other lenses where it's pressed up against the side of something, this, it's using a screw to be pressed down onto grooves. Um, so if I undo, let me see if I can find the, if I undo this guy, you can actually see the little ball bearing is in there. Um, but usually that's not something that would need, unless there's a problem with the ball bearing and it's like, um, there's a, some, some problem with it, um, that's not something you usually need to remove. Uh, and the only thing is when you're putting it back together, this has two sections. There's an inner section, uh, which I'm turning in an outer section. And if the inner section is too far down and the outer section is, uh, so if the intersection's screwed in too far, it'll actually press up against the ball bearing too hard and the thing won't turn. So like this, it's turning very difficultly. Um, so what I actually want to do is loosen this up and turn the outer sec section first. So this, when it's tight, it's a little less, uh, less pressing up against the ball bearing. So I'm gonna just undo this a little bit. Okay, so now it should turn smoothly again. And this mechanical part over here, the mechanical pieces, unfortunately I wasn't able to find a way to remove the aperture control ring separately from this piece. Um, but you, if there are mechanical problems with uh, this section in here, you can kind of try to repair those by removing some of these components in here. I'm not gonna actually remove them, but I'll talk about what all the components are doing. Um, so when I turn the aperture control ring, right now it's fully open. Um, look at this little post along here. That's what's actually going in and coupling the aperture control ring to the, uh, to the aperture. So there's this little bar, and if I press on this bar over here, the aperture will open and close. Um, so this bar is what's coupling it. And as that post moves along the curve in here, um, it moves up and down, which opens and closes the aperture. The other things that happen are the stop down lever, which couples to, let me put this to fully closed, couples to this piece over here. Um, and it has a little spring on it too, these wires are little springs. Um, so the, the stop down lever couples over here and hits this bar here and opens and closes. And then while that's open, you can hit this little lever over here, which closes it again. So if there are any mechanical problems, it would probably be that one of these wires in here, which are acting as springs, are not working properly. So um, that would be the most likely cause or that there's it, things aren't just um, hooked up correctly or things are a little bit out of focus, like the curve over here. Uh, the curve over here is not properly aligned. But that was as far as I was able to take the disassembly of this lens. So there's the disassembly of the lens you can see that I've separated the glass and main mechanical sections um, from the rest of the lens body. Unfortunately, wasn't able to take it completely apart as I would have liked, but you can clean um, many of the body sections on their own. So the body sections and the glass on its own as well. 
And if there are any mechanical problems, you could also try to fix those um, or diagnose and fix those. So starting the reassembly, um, the reassembly is a little bit more challenging than a lot of the other lenses and there are a few things that can uh, go wrong and a few little tricks that will help things out. But it's basically going to be undoing what we did before um, and just putting everything back together. There are just a few parts that have to be lined up correctly for everything to actually work properly. So I'm going to start out by putting in the back glass piece and it just screws in place here. And I'll lock it down with the spanning wrench. Okay, next I uh, need to reattach these two bars. Uh, so there's this, this one with the longer base section and this other one with the shorter base section. So the longer base section one goes over here on top of the curve that controls the aperture. The shorter one goes over here. And the longer one also sits on top of this little divider thing. So it sits like this divider, metal divider piece. Um, sits like that and then the longer one sits on top of it So and it uses the two longer screws the shorter one just sits on directly there and uses the pair of uh, shorter screws So I'm going to get this started outside of the lens And oop. Get this longer one in place first Now the shorter one also has the side like this facing inwards and it uses the two shorter screws. So I'll just reattach this as well. Okay, so now that should be looking like that. Next I'll grab the intersection of the focusing mechanism over here. Um, and you can see it has to slide over here and there it has the four screw holes on the inside here that have to get lined up and it has to slide on top of these two bars like that um, and then go down and go into these four screws going around there and the one other thing that has to happen is because the aperture control stop down lever has to go through here um, using this gear system um, the gear system actually controls this little lever down here and when i pointed out before on the mechanical section so the bar is going to actually hook around this little post down here which is what I showed before is opening and controlling the aperture fully. So it's going on this little post down there. So to line this up, I'm going to start by getting this bar kind of aligned like that. Just Actually, I'm going to start by getting the four screws in place in, before I do this because it will be a little bit easier. So I'm going to just put the screws into their positions in here, but not actually screw them into anything yet because it's so far down inside here, it's going to take a little work to actually um, try to get the screws in the right place if I do it while it's on the lens. Okay, now I'm going to get find where this lever is on the back, back section here and make sure that that's lined up on the correct side here. And just slide this section over. These two posts should go through the indentations of this lower ring down there. Now I'm going to slide this down a little further. Spin out this bar a little on the bottom so I can see where it's going and then slide it on top of that post down there. And now I can tighten down this section with the four screws going around on the inside. Okay, and what I want to check now is that when I have this closed, I can move this screw section over here and it opens and closes the aperture. So when I turn this gear, it opens and closes. That's really what you want to make sure is lined up properly. Um, and if it's not working properly, you'd see that this little bar down here is out of the, it's not into the gap of this lever. So those two would be out of alignment. Um, and you can actually just, if that happens, you can probably just bend this over on top of there and you have everything screwed down. Um, and that'd be a lot easier than taking it back apart. 
Next, I'm going to reattach this body section here, so the one that is right below the aperture control ring. You can see that it has a little gap in it, um, and that gap needs to line up with uh, this lever over here. So I'm going to just slide this over, and I don't think it needs to be locked in any particular position, but you want it so that the lever can move fully back and forth, so it's not hitting up against the edges on either side. Uh, so I'll use the uh, three little slotted screws going around to tighten this down. So next I have to get the back uh, or the focusing mechanism back onto the um, intersection. So I have the outer focusing mechanism here. And before I marked where it needs to line up and that's just is going to help me because it can go in, in quite a few different orientations. So I have the two marks right here and here, um, and I want to screw this back in, um, kind of in that orientation. There we go. So what could happen if you um, change how it's lining up and you go in a different, uh, Lining, so it's lining up differently is that it won't focus properly to infinity um, and it might not even hit the two extremes so it won't be optically focused and then also you may not when you turn the focusing ring later um, when it's actually locked in place it wouldn't hit the two extremes um, all the way it would stop somewhere so I'm just going to focus to infinity here give me a little more space to work with Now I have to get this section here back on. Um, so this is the section with the depth of field scale. And I want it to line up so that the depth of field scale is kind of over. You can see on the inside it actually has the, so this section here has a little bar going around here. And the outer focusing ring has a little notch here. Um, and this is what actually limits how far you can turn it back and forth. So I'm going to get the depth of field scale kind of lined up with the aperture ring over there. Um, and that will tell me which of the screws I need to use for this. And I'm just going to get these four screws back in place and tighten this down. So that looks like it's lined up pretty well. Okay. Now, one of the harder parts of the reassembly is that I have to get all the ball bearings and the little spacers back in, in place. So let me just get one started here. I'm going to take one of the spacers and then the ball bearings. So they have to be alternating going around and they have to be in this inner pocket here um, all the way around. And they have to go right next to each other as well. So this is kind of a pain uh, to reassemble because uh, they can really easily, when you're doing later stages, get uh, messed up again and you'll have to do this maybe a few times to get it correct. Um, but this is actually what provides or, or um, reduces the friction so that the intersection of the lens can turn so you can actually focus in and out. Um, and if the ball bearings here are messed up, what might happen is that you would not be able to turn the lens at all to focus in and out. Um, so that's how you might notice or know that there's something wrong is that if it you can turn it Maybe it's very hard or um, it's not smooth or you just can't turn it at all The ball bearings here might be messed up so I'm just gonna get these last two they need to go in this kind of little uh, indentation or groove down there Okay, so they should all be lined up going around and all directly next to here. So you want to kind of push these spacers in as far as possible as well, because the next stage sits on top of it um, and kind of you need the, that to be as far in as possible. Now the next piece I'm going to put back in is this. So it has the two bars on this side and then also a little, the side goes down, um, a little metal piece over here which is going to go towards the back of the lens. The depth of field scare, the aperture control is over here. I don't want to tilt it because I have the ball bearings there. Um, but the little bar goes over on this side. And the one other thing is that it has the uh, slot here that has to go on top of 
all the ball bearings and things we just put in. So I'm gonna get this lined up by putting the two bars down into the slots right here, going up. So that and just press this down on top of the ball bearings tightly and make sure that the, when I turn this back and forth by turning the um, focusing ring, that it moves nice and slew, uh, smoothly at this stage. One other component for this stage is this little metal piece here, this brass metal piece. Um, I think it holds or kind of spaces this intersection against the wall so it doesn't rub against the wall. Uh, but there's a little uh, slot right there. So if I just stick this metal piece down into here, I should be able to get that lined up. Yep, so like that. Okay, so that's probably the most difficult part of the reassembly right there. Now I'm going to take the uh, spacing rings or the uh, the washer type things and put the, the one with the gap uh, so it's going over the metal bar on this side and then take the other two and just set them kind of in here. And now I can talk a little bit about how the section here, which is the mounting plate and the stop down lever, is going to get coupled into the lens. So the stop down lever you can see over on this side, if I just let me set this aside for a second, uh, you can see that the stop down lever moves this piece here. So I'm moving the stop down lever, it moves a piece here, which then in turn moves, there's nothing um, holding this piece here, this uh, one that goes back and forth, but normally it is held over in this position, so it gets pressed over here, so it moves this back and forth. And there's a little spring wire over here on this side. On the other side, flipping this over, when I move the stop down lever back and forth and it moves that little piece, it moves this part of a gear on this side. And that part of the gear couples into, there's a long gear bar type thing, it's like a in here, it's a little hard to see because it's kind of far down in the lens, but it extends pretty far, like an inch long or so, down into the lens. And so what has to line up for the stop down lever um, on this outer section is that the gear piece needs to be lined up here and then the bar itself with the gear goes into here in this groove there. Um, and then also on this back piece there are two um, brass colored bars here on the exterior and those go into the two slots on the lens body intersection right here. And then of course there are the four screws going around that have to be lined up as well. But once you get the, um, the two bars here lined up and the stop down lever, everything else should line up. The one thing is that when you're putting it back into the lens, you wanna hold the, here, let me get this started. Um, you wanna hold the um, bar here, this little piece, over as far as possible towards the wall of, this, of the lens. Um, and that's just gonna, is help, it's gonna help actually make sure that when you turn the gear, it, it goes into the right position. Um, so let me just slide this down. Now I can actually check by hitting the stop down lever. It should fully open. Um, if the gear is not in the right spot, you would see that it's not fully opened. Um, when you hit the stop down lever. It would be like uh, a quarter open or half open even, or it would just wouldn't do anything. So that's what you want to check for. And now I'll reattach this back section using the four screws. I can, I think I have to rotate this around a little bit. Yeah, so I'll move the focusing ring around and use the four screws on this back section to reattach. Now, to complete the back reassembly, I'm going to take this ring here, um, and it has a slot in here, and then also this black ring in here has kind of, it's a little hard to see with these stoppers, but um, it has three indentions going around. And I wanna line up these screws so they go with the indentions, so. Get this lined up. Okay, and then finally on the back section, I'm going to put this back plate back in. So it has three screws going around that attach here, here, and here. 
just sits like this, three black screws. So I'll get this back into position. Okay, so that has the back of the lens complete. Oh, back to the front of the lens. On the front side, I just have to reattach the glass so it just screws into place. And then, here, let me get the lens cap on. The lens hood just slides over like this. And there are three that need to get lined up here. And there's also a little dot here that indicates where the aperture setting currently is. So you want to have that lined up correctly as well. So that has the reassembly complete. The things you want to check that you should uh, make sure work are that the aperture control ring is correctly controlling the aperture. And that when you hit the stop down lever, it fully opens. And then when you hit this little lever over here, it closes again. Also, you want to check that the when you focus it in and out, it stops at infinity and at the minimum focusing distance of 2.5 meters as well. And that the focusing is smooth. If those ball bearings or anything became out of alignment, uh, they uh, got messed up while you're putting the lens back together, the focusing will be very, it'll be difficult to focus the lens in and out um, or uh, it won't focus at all. Uh, so that's how you would know that something went wrong. Overall, the lens is harder to take apart than the other Minolta telephoto lens that I've taken apart so far. Um, partially because it's a telephoto lens and it's a lot longer and just because of how it's constructed. Um, because you have to go in through the back, you're, you end up working uh, down inside the lens quite a bit. Uh, and it also uses slotted screws exclusively, which is really annoying because they're, they're a lot easier to strip um, and they're a lot harder to line up in my opinion. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why they chose to use that particular type of screws and why they chose to use this kind of design. Um, but it's definitely a more annoying lens with a lot of smaller components um, and other things that have to be lined up correctly. Uh, so it is harder to repair than a lot of the other lenses that I've taken a look at.